Can you walk us through some of the research on the harm of leaving your child for more than the two, three hours a day to the extreme of eight to 12 hours a day? So daycare, the children in daycare have higher salivary cortisol levels. So they test their salivary cortisol levels, the stress hormones. They have higher stress hormone levels. Um, and the research shows that children um, who, who are put in daycare at too early an age are, um, have higher levels of behavioral problems, uh, early signs of aggression, and, and ADHD-like symptoms later on in the school years. That's what the research shows. And this is daycare for how many hours? You know, again, I can't give a specific number, but we say less is more in this case. So I usually say more is more because more is more in terms of presence. But you would say uh, no daycare, in my opinion, is good daycare. Remember that when you put your child in daycare, you're putting them in a group setting with transient daycare workers who are underpaid, paid, undertrained, overwhelmed, and often absent. So there's a lot of um, absenteeism in daycare workers because um, because they get overwhelmed. So and th the best way I can describe it to you is um, the ratios in daycare are usually not less than five to one, <laughs> sometimes eight to one. In Sweden, they're 12 to one. And if you have a daycare worker that's out, even in America, it can be eight to one. And so I want you to imagine, every mother who's listening to this, I want you to imagine whether you would have the ability as a daycare worker to soothe even five babies who are in distress from moment to moment to regulate their emotions and get them back to homeostasis and make them feel secure. Inevitably, you would lose your mind and you'd end up taking days off and those babies would be in, in like transient care, in care with many different people and... Um, and also, the wear and tear on those daycare workers means they don't last for very long. But the most important thing is you're putting your very neurologically fragile child in a group environment that's overstimulating, uh, has too many people, too much noise, too many uh, environmental stimulus, too many people coming in and coming out. Um, and so that's not what babies babies need. Quiet calm, peaceful, playful, secure environments. And I can't emphasize enough that daycare is not that. What's your advice for single moms who feel this is... Grab a friend and live... If I really want to say what my advice is, live with your best friend who is also a single mom. Grab one or two other single moms and get a group house and live with your children together. Um, there was a great book by Anita Diamant called The Red Tent. It was a biblical book. It was about the sister, one of, you know, with the book, um, it was about uh, whose daughter? Jacob's, one of the Jacob's daughters, the one that's never talked about. And, um, and basically, it was a book that talked about in biblical times, women lived in red tents with their children. They raised their children together. There were women, you know, they, they lived in group environments. If you don't have extended family, you make an extended family. And that will be your family. And you can even share caregiving. Maybe you say, I'll work on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. You work on Tuesday and Thursdays. You watch the kids on Monday and Wednesdays. I'll watch the kids on and Tuesday. And we'll all and pay the rent. We'll all pay the rent and we'll cook dinner together. And we'll raise our children together. And, you know, um, community, not isolation. It's a powerful thing you're recommending, replacing all the daycares, because there are a lot of single moms. I think the number is a fourth of all children are being raised by single moms today. Um, and, you know, all different circumstances that they're facing. And imagine if they all had this sort of, you know, system set up to really be there for each other. Obviously, that doesn't mean people that outside of the single mom group shouldn't be helping single moms and supporting them. That work of raising a child is some of the most important work you could do in the world. But I think it would, it would, do you think that would radically change developmental radically, outcomes for kids? Radically. 